Kenyon Martin, Mike Miller, Jamal Crawford, Hito Turkoglu, Jamal McGlure, and Michael Redd. Those players I just named were the best players in the 2000 NBA draft class. How's it going fellas, my name's Andy, and today we're going to take a look at the 2000 NBA Draft, which is, in my opinion, the worst draft class in NBA history. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the best players in this draft, as well as some of the biggest busts who never lived up to their potential. Although there were three players who eventually became All-Stars, they only made up for a total of three All-Star appearances. Kenyon Martin, Michael Redd, and Jamal McGlure all made the All-Star team just once in their careers. We'll start with Kenyon Martin, since he was the number one pick and for his couple of years with the Nets, it kinda looked like he might develop into a future star. Sure, he was playing with Jason Kidd, an all-time great point guard, but Martin had a very unique skill set. In his first four seasons with the Nets, he was a good finisher at the rim, making 68% of his shots between 0 and 3 feet. He could hit the mid-range jumper occasionally, and was also very fast for a power forward. Defensively, he was very underrated. In the 2002 and 2003 seasons where he helped the Nets reach the finals, the team had the highest defensive rating in the entire league. And a lot of it had to do with Martin. At 6'9", 235 pounds, he was strong enough to hold his own against most power forwards, but also quick enough to switch onto perimeter players for short periods at a time. Martin would become an All-Star in the 2004 season, which would be the first and only All-Star selection of his entire career. Unfortunately, his career went downhill very quickly after that. He got traded to Denver, and then the injuries and off-court issues started to pile up. Martin had to get microfracture surgery on both knees, got into arguments with his coach, and he was also suspended a couple of times too. And finally, in 2015, at the age of 37, he retired. Mike Miller was the 5th overall pick of the draft and won Rookie of the Year, playing alongside Tracy McGrady in Orlando. Despite never becoming an All-Star, Miller was a great role player for his entire career. His best seasons came with the Grizzlies, where he won 6th Man of the Year in 2006. In the following season, he even averaged over 18 points a game. Overall, he was a solid player, a great shooter who complemented their star, Pau Gasol, very well. When we talk about the best shooters in the 2000s, Miller is probably not the first guy you think of, but he was a really good 3-point shooter. Towards his later years, the years he's probably most known for were with the Miami Heat. Miller's best performance in the playoffs came during Game 5 of the 2012 Finals, where he made 7 out of 8 3-pointers, finishing with 23 points and helping LeBron capture his first NBA title. Overall, Miller has had a nice career and he retired in 2017. Jamal Crawford, the 8th pick of the draft, probably had the most successful career out of any other player in this draft. Even though he's never been an All-Star, he won 6th Man of the Year 3 different times, the most in NBA history. He also played over 1,200 regular season games, over 200 more games than the next closest player, Mike Miller. Crawford has had 9 seasons where he averaged over 15 points per game, and throughout his career he's made a name for himself as a great bench player. Whenever someone says a player can provide instant offense, Crawford is one of the first guys we think of. He fits into that mold of players who can heat up instantly and take over a game out of nowhere. Kinda similar to guys like Vinnie Johnson, Lou Williams, and Manu Ginobili. Crawford also scored 50 points for 3 different teams. That's pretty amazing, and it shows that, no matter what team he's on, he always plays the same way, he's going to shoot, he's going to get buckets, regardless of the situation. Hito Turkoglu, the 16th pick. Turkoglu was a very unique player. At 6'10", he could handle the ball like a guard, and he had the court vision of a guard. A matchup nightmare against most teams, Turkoglu had his best seasons in Orlando, playing alongside Dwight Howard. In my opinion, he was the perfect small forward for that team, because he was also a great 3-point shooter, shooting 38% for his career. Combine that with his great passing skills, and I mean, he did a bit of everything. Shoot, drive, rebound, facilitate, space the floor, Turkoglu was great. Those are great numbers, but unfortunately, his prime was very short. Now, we've got Jamal McGlure, the 19th pick. So, usually the only times you hear about Jamal McGlure are when people talk about the strangest all-star selections ever. 
When I was watching the NBA back then, I didn't know who the hell Jamal McGlure was. So when I saw him on the All-Star team, it was really surprising. In his one All-Star season, he averaged 14 points and 10 rebounds a game on decent efficiency. I went back and looked at the New Orleans Hornets 2003-4 season and I figured that maybe his team was doing really well that helped him get in. But by the All-Star break, they were only 28 and 25, so yeah, I don't know. I guess it was the Eastern Conference, so that explains part of it. So after this season, McGlure could not maintain his All-Star status as he reverted back to playing like a role player for the rest of his career. And going all the way down the list to the 43rd pick of the draft, Michael Redd. The player who had the best prime in this draft class and also the only player who made an All-NBA team. Michael Redd in his prime was pretty ridiculous. From 2004 to 2008, Redd averaged about 24 points and honestly he would have made more All-Star appearances if the Bucks were better. He didn't have much help offensively and a bunch of knee injuries in the middle of his prime basically ended his career. By 29 years old, he looked nowhere near as explosive or agile as before and at 32 years old, he was forced to retire because he could never recover. I think if Red was fully healthy, his career would have looked very different. He only appeared in the playoffs for three years and never made it out of the first round in any of them. But like I mentioned earlier, his teams were never that good. At his peak, he was definitely the best player in this draft class. I just wish his career lasted longer, he was an incredible scorer who scored so effortlessly. So those were the 6 best players from the draft class, but there's a couple of others that deserve an honorable mention. Former slam dunk champion Desmond Mason, freakishly athletic and one of the most underrated dunkers of his time. Chris Mim, the starting center for those Lakers teams when they were struggling. Jason Collier, who unfortunately passed away at 28 years old from an enlarged heart. Deshaun Stevenson, who was a major piece in helping the Mavs win their first championship in 2011. Eton Thomas, <laughs> man he was jacked. Quentin Richardson, up until this day he still holds the Suns franchise record for most three-pointers made in a single season, with 226. Morris Peterson, the guy who is best known for this insane game-tying shot. And the play continues, Peterson, got it! I don't believe it! I don't believe it! Eddie House, nothing spectacular about his career, he was a journeyman, but I threw him in here because most people know him. He hit some big shots during the Celtics 2008 playoff run. Eduardo Nahara, I only know him because back when he played in Dallas, I kept confusing him with Steve Nash. Speedy Claxton, who was my favorite player to watch back in the day. He was pretty damn fast. And of course, the janitor, Brian Cardinal. Those were most of the players I recognized from the draft, and some of them had long careers, but nothing special. And when you have a draft that's this bad, there's bound to be some huge busts. In fact, I think it's had the biggest string of consecutive busts in history. The number 2 pick, Stromile Swift, the number 3 pick, Darius Miles, and the number 4 pick, Marcus Pfizer, were all really bad. They're all considered to be busts, although Miles did have a terrible knee injury that ended his career early. But the main reason people don't talk about these three as huge busts is because, well, the rest of the draft was so bad anyway. Well, at least they got some cool names. The 2000 NBA draft was the worst draft in NBA history, in my opinion. Combined, the players made a total of three All-Star appearances, and one All-NBA team, which was by Michael Redd. I think the 2000 draft was a good example that shows how not every draft class is filled with stars or superstars. Some would say the players did not meet expectations, which is true, but at the same time, the expectations of that draft wasn't very high to begin with. Nobody was seen as a franchise changing player, even the number one pick. Kenyon Martin's draft comparison was Rashid Wallace, who was a great player, but it's not like you want the best player of the draft to be Rashid Wallace. Overall, there was an interesting group of players in this draft, regardless of how good they were. Nowadays, basketball is much more popular around the world, so I don't think we'll ever see a draft as bad as this one again. There are great prospects coming in from everywhere, and hopefully it'll continue. And that's all folks, I hope you enjoyed the video, let me know your thoughts on the 2000 draft class. Do you think it was the worst in history in terms of the players that came out of it and the expectations? 
Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.